So I came out of my uh, alchemical oven in which the uh, teachings for the coming retreat are being sweated out. Uh, and uh, I did that because uh, I felt it was my duty, and I felt a calling from my heart to offer tonight a eulogy for one of the great uh, and important influences of our historic moment, Baba Ramdas, who passed from his body, I think on Sunday evening, at the age of 88. And I didn't have time before this to be able to uh, properly offer, uh, publicly at least, blessings and, uh, and a kind of a uh, collegial farewell to someone who was a great influence upon uh, this being personally and upon uh, a whole generation of North Americans who came into uh, adulthood in the 60s or even into adolescence in the 60s and who were extremely uh, motivated and inspired by Ramdas' willingness uh, to uh, give it all up uh, and, uh, and follow his heart uh, to uh, India to discover a deeper truth <clears throat> than was available in uh, the confines of Western civilization and its uh, paradigms. As you probably all know, uh, his name was Richard Alpert, originally at birth, uh, came from a very wealthy Jewish family, and with all the privileges that that entails, uh, was able to very easily become a professor of psychology at Harvard. And <clears throat> one of his uh, senior uh, department colleagues was a man named Timothy Leary. And uh, Leary, as you know, uh, influenced him to drop a certain chemical called LSD, and uh, that changed his life. And, uh, and Alpert went on to, uh, <clears throat> to go very deeply into acid tripping and uh, to discover its uh, spiritual dimension, or I should probably say the spiritual dimension of consciousness that LSD could open a portal toward. And, and he, uh, he went very public along with Leary in his use of this chemical and saw it along with uh, Leary, as a revolutionary uh, appearance of a deus ex machina that would have the power to create a counterculture and a, if not a complete spiritual revolution, at least the beginnings of one. And I think we owe the... Uh, the state of the, let's say, the union in terms of consciousness today and people's willingness to be psychonauts and to uh, not simply to take uh, plant medicines and other hallucinogens or entheogens or psychedelics, as your frame of reference would prefer to call them, but to challenge the barriers of consciousness in every possible way that has uh, opened up a discontinuity in the trajectory of Western civilization 
and opened up the possibility for a radical shift in the movement of history that is even now gaining more momentum toward its ultimate revelatory potentialities. And at the time that uh, Alpert and Leary were doing what they did to uh, convince a whole generation of uh, gringos to tune in, turn on, and drop out, maybe that's not quite in the right order, but uh, they, they did it, uh, I did it, and I don't think I would be here and this ashram would exist if not for the influence that Leary and uh, Alpert both had on my own willingness uh, at the age of, I guess, 16 at that point of uh, uh, checking out uh, what lay beyond the event horizon of ego consciousness uh, and uh, discovering that I didn't want an ordinary conventional life in the capitalist system. And so if it weren't for, uh, for his, uh, his courage, and both of them, of course, lost their jobs at Harvard. Uh, but I, I have a feeling that, you know, when you are a professor at Harvard, you've kind of made it to the top of the pecking order of the, uh, the US uh, academic system. And so, in a way, you have a certain kind of credibility and immunity that you wouldn't have in any other uh, condition or state uh, of, uh, of professional, uh, let's say, um, visibility and legitimacy in the, in the academic and therefore the cultural scene. And that allowed uh, both of them, even though that they, they would have to give up their uh, formal positions, to remain uh, in, the, uh, in the heart of, uh, of the cultural vortex that formed around this new signifier, this new cultural meme of uh, not simply acid, but all of the things that came with the 60s uh, including rock music uh, that couldn't have existed without LSD, and, uh, and, and a whole cultural uh, frame of reference that preferred uh, to make love, not war, and that refused to go to war and during the Vietnam War. And so the whole movement of uh, civil disobedience and... Uh, draft card burning and uh, the whole uh, assumption of the, the right, the power, even the duty to rebel against uh, an illegitimate system that was creating a, uh, a massively illegitimate war and, uh, and destroying whatever remained of the cultural sense of uh, coherence and legitimacy, which had already been shattered, as you probably know, in 1963 by the murder of John F. Kennedy, and then later his brother and Martin Luther King, etc. So the, uh, the veil was uh, removed from the, uh, the deep state and its machinations were uh, very publicly on display in all of their ugliness and all of their uh, limitless immorality. And so the response of beings who refuse to tolerate such a state of affairs in what purported to be a democracy and a republic that stood for higher values of liberty, et cetera, was uh, a clarion call to uh, a kind of uprising of the heart that changed uh, the world forever. And it was synchronicitously accompanied by uh, movements that I think had an independent 
origination, although nothing does have an independent origination, as we know from Buddhism, everything is connected to everything else, but what was happening, for example, in May 68 in Paris and was happening all over Europe uh, became a global uh, consciousness that formed among the uh, young adults of that period that uh, created a new kind of connectivity among those who were experienced, as Jimi Hendrix put it, and who uh, were able to relate at a different level of consciousness than those who had been left behind, who remained in a 50s uh, mentality, not, uh, didn't cross over. And that happened in families. I know I had an older sister, I guess I still do somewhere, uh, who uh, has no interest in, in, uh, in relating to me, or I think ability, because she lives in a different universe of meaning. But she was only four years older, but didn't make the cut. And, uh, and so there were two cultures. And in almost every family I knew, there were uh, this split between one culture and another, almost like Jesus said, I have come to bring a sword and to divide the families and children against fathers. And I'm sure I'm not the only uh, a person who was disowned rather formally from uh, uh, his uh, family system because of being both uh, an anti-war activist and uh, an acid head and then a college dropout and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, I won't go into all the vices that I represented, but it was everything evil, including, of course, the dropping of uh, any uh, allegiance to, uh, to any religious signifiers. And so the, uh, the kind of, uh, of life that, that was then opened was free of all of the, uh, the sort of uh, demands and commands uh, of a system that I had uh, left behind uh, in a very natural way that didn't require any struggle because that was what was happening, actually. And so it was not a... Uh, it, it was not something that took any courage or deserves any credit, uh, but the credit does go to those pioneers, uh, such as Albert, who went first, paved the way, paid the price, and uh, who, uh, who, who lit a, uh, a fire that, that soon became a, a global uh, bonfire of the vanities. And of course, we all know uh, what happened, that, uh, that the spiritual revolution did not succeed. Uh, but what it did accomplish was to, uh, to force those who saw the inability of uh, those uh, chemical supplements to actually create a higher level of consciousness other than in the imaginary level. And it's easy to grow your hair long <clears throat> and to smoke joints and to, uh, to live in a, a VW van and you know, park it at the seashore and, and live uh, on the land and to start communes and to do the various other uh, things that, that happened along the way. As, as part of this countercultural rebellion, but there wasn't the, the core of an internalized uh, revelation of the real self, such that the, uh, the energy level uh, could not be sustained. And Alpert <clears throat> was honest enough to recognize the limitations uh, when LSD could not take him beyond his own egoic, uh, let's say, uh, uh, tendencies toward the lower chakra acting out that he was prone to. And he was prone t toward, uh, toward this in a way that was not yet uh, culturally um, 
fully legitimized, let's say, or acceptable. And what I appreciated about him probably most in that time was his honesty in his talks of, of psychologically revealing uh, his own, uh, let's say, inability to live at the level that he knew was the truth, but that he could only approach uh, when, when he was uh, high on the, the acid, but, but could not sustain otherwise. And this led him to, uh, to go to India to attempt to discover a natural way of uh, abiding in the supernatural level of consciousness that he knew was there, but was closed off uh, because of the uh, egoic demand for jouissance. And it was, I think, very uh, important that uh, he had been a psychologist because it enabled him to uh, witness and critique his own experiences and imperiences as he uh, traveled through India. He met his guru, Neem Karoli Baba. Uh, this uh, man was able to read his mind and tell him what he was thinking. And, and, uh, and that, of course, included a lot of things that he didn't want anyone to know he was thinking. And he was, uh, he was put into a position of being in such awe of this being that he could do nothing but surrender. And he became a, a, a real disciple. Well, I think a, a kind of a disciple that's extremely rare in the world, that he was able to fully give himself to the devotional path and to take his bhakti to levels in which a, a real transformation of identity took place, in which I, I believe he earned the name Ram Das. He became a servant of Ram, of God, and, uh, and he was able to live out that service in a way that produced a uh, a, a series of, of books and of uh, teachings and of a of role model of someone who was able to follow uh, the calling of his heart and of the consciousness that he recognized in the guru as being also in himself as his own inner sat guru and was able to convey the message of the urgency of discovering the Sat Guru within yourself uh, for everyone. This message was, was extremely important and empowering for many, many people. And I think if he hadn't gone to India and, and come back transformed, and I was very fortunate to, to be able to, to meet him, to see him, to... Uh, Eventually, he uh, lived very uh, near me in Marin County for some time. And to have a, a, a connection, at least with many people, connected to him. So although there wasn't really an, any uh, strong, direct uh, connection, there was uh, a, uh, a sense of being a part of an energy field, that he was one of those to be able to ground and because of his influence, he was able to invite one of the spiritual teachers he had in India named Baba Haridas uh, to come to the US and he, could, he arranged his visa and all of that. And, uh, and it was because of, of, of Haridas's arrival in the US that I was able to then make that same connection to an Indian teacher that then brought me on my own journey Toward, uh, toward where we are now. And so it was, uh, it, there were a lot of synchronicities uh, all along for many years uh, between uh, the journey I was on and that of Ram Das. And so I feel great appreciation for him. One of the early books that he wrote, I think it was the first of them, 
was Be Here Now. I got a new copy of it recently because my original copy, of course, long ago, I'm sure it was uh, uh, probably used to make joints or something, but uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was gone. But uh, it, I, I have read it again recently, and it holds up. I, if any of you want to re read a really stirring story of someone's journey of discovery of, of higher consciousness via the path of yoga and uh, bhakti and uh, uh, guru worship, I would say, but of a, a very uh, sattvic kind and a, a kind that, uh, that brought Ramdas into a level of jnana that few people in the West were able to understand. I think you'll appreciate this. Another book that he wrote uh, for use during uh, acid trips was uh, a, a new translation of the Tibetan Book of the Dead that he did with Leary. And it's also a very powerful guided meditation that I recommend for people to read. One of the reasons I, I was immediately drawn to this book was the, the cover... I don't know if you recognize this, but it's, it's uh, Van Gogh's chair. It comes from a painting by Van Gogh that's very famous that I had already been uh, in love with when I first uh, saw it, or at least in a book, and, uh, and, and at Antioch College, where I was then uh, taking my acid, um, I started the Van Gogh Chair Society. And it, was, uh, it, it, it brought people together who wanted to use that image actually as a, a meditation device, a kind of a yantra, because it, uh, it, it has some je ne sais quoi that uh, is, is capable of bringing one into a mandalic altered state of, uh, of unity as when in a state of... Uh, of silent mind, one becomes the chair and supported by it. But in any case, Ram Das brought this man, Baba Hari Das, uh, to the U.S., and uh, he was uh, he turned me on to uh, meditation. And uh, as he uh, he had a great influence on on Ram Das himself, and and Ram Das talks about him in the book and about his, uh, his teachings. Of course, uh, Haridas was uh, already a, a silent yogi, a muni, and uh, he wrote on a little blackboard. And he, he taught a lot of things to Ramdas that were mentioned in the book that were almost word for word uh, told to me by uh, Baba Haridas. And, so, and although I, I, I think I read this after I met Haridas, if I remember accurately, it nonetheless was a, was a very important, um, uh, I guess, confirmation of uh, my recognition of the validity of this being as a spiritual guide. So I thought it would be useful to perhaps read some of the uh, passages from Be Here Now. How many people have ever read Be Here Now? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, that's good. You've read Be Here Now? Oh, that's shocking, I thought. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Well, you, I guess you were in the 60s at some, on some level. Uh, and uh, who else was it? Uh, you, were, you, of course, I, I could understand that, and I, uh, you have to have read it, and Jacob, of course. So, okay, uh, good to know. So I'm, I'm um, uh, preaching to the choir here. So I won't read uh, too much to you, but I'll, I'll read a few of these lines because, again, I think that all of them uh, together produced an inspiring opening to a, uh, a way of life that would otherwise have been inconceivable to people from Kansas and Nebraska or uh, Miami Beach or wherever uh, they happen to live. And, they, uh, and, and the book, I think, uh, especially because the way it's written, it's not an ordinary book, right? You, you can see that this, uh, this guy was stoned at least when he was writing this and uh, putting these pictures on here. And, uh, he was not uh, 
trying to write an academic uh, you know, tome for people at Harvard to uh, read. Uh, this was a book for the people. So it, and it worked, and it, uh, it, the message uh, was delivered. So uh, I give him a lot of credit for being able to produce a book like this that I, I think stands alone in all of the literature in my library. I don't have any other book like this. And uh, I think that it's probably more effective as a, a transmitter of the message than uh, most of the more uh, theoretically oriented ones. So here's a quote from Ram Tirtha. A lot of the book uh, does have, have quotes, but a lot of it is his own uh, free associations. I am without form, without limit, beyond space, Beyond time, I am in everything. Everything is me. I am the bliss of the universe. Everything am I. So it was that kind of uh, thought that, as you can imagine, was irresistible uh, to, uh, to one in those days who uh, would, uh, would very easily uh, fly to India if, uh, if one could have that experience constantly. And so it, uh, it pulled many, many people to, uh, to make that journey, but I don't know that they made the inner journey the way that Ram Dass did. But you see, there's something that pulls a person toward this journey. Way, way back, deep inside, is a memory. There is something inside each of us that comes from behind that veil behind the place of your own birth. And it is as if you have tasted of something somewhere in your past that's been so high, so much light, so much energy, that nothing you can experience through any of your senses can now be enough. Thoughts somewhere inside Everybody knows that there is a place which is totally fulfilling. Not a desperate flick of fulfillment. It is a state of fulfillment. You may experience despair that you'll never know that. Good, because through the despair and through that surrender, you get closer to it. Through the despair comes surrender, and through that surrender, you get closer to it. If you could stand back far enough and watch the whole process, you would see you are a totally determined being. The very moment you will wake up is totally determined. How long you will sleep is totally determined. What you will hear of what I say is totally determined. There are no accidents in this business at all. Accidents are just from where you're looking. To the ego, it looks like it's miracles and accidents. No, no miracles, no accidents. It's just your vantage point that you're sort of stuck in. The whole trip I'm talking about is fraught with paradox. The most exquisite paradox. As soon as you give it all up, you can have it all. How about that one? As long as you want power, you can't have it. The minute you don't want power, you'll have more than you ever dreamed possible. What a weird thing. As long as you have an ego, you're on a limited trip. You're on a trivial trip. A trip that's going to last maybe, what, 60, say 70, maybe 80 years and full with fear of its end, trying to make its own eternity. 
Well, if I am not speaking, if I am not what I thought I was, how did I get into this? Who am I? For only when I know who I am will I know what is possible. I could read the whole thing, but I'm going to stop soon. I'll read one more page here. Two things are required. One is vairagya. The falling away of worldliness. The return of innocence. That means you're starting to have enough of all that. You see that everything you're going to experience through your senses and everything you're going to know through your thinking mind is not going to be enough. And worldly things begin to appear like dross instead of gold. Just not totally. It begins to happen. It's falling away. My teacher said, the veil falls away like the skin of a snake. The ego thins like clouds until only a transparent layer remains. The other thing that's required is the pure seeking, the purity of the faith. There is as much faith in you, here, in us, at this moment, as anywhere in India. Where there is faith, there is the presence of the Guru. He is it all. He is all your impurities, all your corruption, and there he is smiling at you through them, saying, and this too, he sees, he understands. Total compassion, total compassion means You are the universe. You are all form. You are the breath. You are the river. You are the void. You are the desire to be enlightened. You are enlightened. May we all be here now. I know that Ramdas is here now, and he can be here without his body because he was willing and able to make that leap into the formless, into the realization of that alone within us which is independent of prakriti, independent of the other, independent of the illusion of matter, independent of the hologram, independent of name and form and thought, but pure, absolute presence that is limitless, that abides as the ground of being. Indeed, Ramdas has not died but he has become the universe. May we honor his passage from one state to another and recognize that all that he has become is only what all of us already are in the oneness of that consciousness that brought his manifest form and his journey into being as a reflection of the inner passage and pilgrimage that all of us take
from the ego, ego to the inner being of that knowledge, that presence, that intelligence that is the one guru who guides us all.